What's up, everybody? It's Young Cure with a Persona 5 trailer analysis. The Persona spin-off of the Shin Megami Tensei series has become one of the most popular JRPGs thanks to its stylish presentation, day-by-day -day progression, meaningful character development through social links, and solid RPG gameplay, all of which blend together seamlessly. So when Atlas finally decided to show off glimpses of Persona 5 gameplay through the latest trailer, fans were excited to say the least. I myself have been an avid Persona player since the release of Persona 3, so I've decided to give the new Persona 5 trailer a thorough analysis. There is a lot to talk about, so without further ado, let's dive right into it. The first shot of the trailer shows Persona 5's setting, which is Shibuya. As you can see, the skyline here has all the trademark features of the urban city, from the tall buildings and skyscrapers to the neon lights of the bustling city's nightlife. This may be the first time in which a Persona game is set in a modern-day real-life setting. Persona 4 did take place in a rural town called Inaba, which was also the name of an old Japanese province, but you won't find a town of that name in Japan today. Moving on, the trailer pans towards a building, which clearly houses a casino, as can be noted by what are either slot machines or pachinko. And out from the shadows comes the main character, who is more notoriously known as the Phantom, and he gives off a very distinct anime-style cat burglar feel. We'll talk more about him later, when the trailer shows a better look of him. We are then shown two title cards. The first one can be translated as, What's Waiting For You, Glory, and the second one can be translated as, Or Destruction. These title cards seem to be perfectly suited for the burglar theme that this trailer is going for. To me, they read like they're saying, Will you succeed in your delinquency and reap glory, or will you get caught and face destruction? In the next few shots, we are shown better looks at the protagonist, who makes a fabulous escape in typical anime cat burglar style. I mean, honestly, the guy gives off a very Kit Kat burglar from Detective Conan or Tuxedo Mask from Sailor Moon vibe, but more badass. And right here is a good shot of our protagonist donning his burglar costume. His attire seems to be a good middle ground between that of an actual burglar and that of an anime burglar, featuring pieces that would actually help in his endeavors, like dark clothes, overall flexible looking material, boots and gloves, while retaining some of that flashy, fabulous look that animes just can't seem to live without. The sequence ends with our protagonist seemingly getting caught, the consequences of which are currently unknown. The trailer follows up with a stylish sequence which could possibly be parts of the intro for Persona 5. If you watch the intro sequences for Persona 3 and 4, you will notice that they too feature stylized sequences similar to this one. During this sequence, we are shown glimpses of some of the characters. Right here we have the main character, who we got a good look at before. Next up is An Takamaki, who can easily be distinguished by the long piggy tails as well as her tight, Catwoman-like suit, which we get a better look at later on. The next character I'm not so sure of. The tail had me thinking initially that this could be the cat Morgana, but the pattern on the tail is completely different, and the character's overall figure is clearly human. My assumption is that this is a character who joins the player's party further down the line. Last but not least, we are shown Ryuji Sakamoto, who we'll get a better look at later on. The trailer then pans back to the main character once again, giving us another close look. Something I'd like to talk about is this mask. I get the feeling that the burglar masks will tie heavily into whatever alternate world players will be traveling to in this game. In Persona 3, characters use their own custom guns to summon personas. In Persona 4, each character got their own custom glasses to be able to see through the fog in the TV world. I'm guessing that the custom thing with special effects that each character will be donning in Persona 5 will be burglar masks. Perhaps it's the masks that link these characters to Persona 5's alternate world, transforming them from normal high school students to mischievous thieves with supernatural powers along the way. Next up, we get a look at Igor's new assistants. 
It looks like we'll be dealing with twins this time, which should make this social link real kinky if you catch my drift. All joking aside, interesting to note is that they are both wearing an eye patch. The girl on the left is wearing her eye patch on the left, while the girl on the right is wearing her eye patch on the right. I also noticed that they follow the cat burglar and thief motif that this game is going for with their attire, which looks a hell lot like something the police would wear. There are even prison cells in the background to match. We'll get a better look at this new velvet room later on in the trailer. And of course, here we have Igor, one of few constants to every Persona game. We are then taken to a view that was clearly inspired by the famous Shibuya Crossing, where we are shown the protagonist falling until he's engulfed by a ball of energy from which this angelic entity rises. This is without a doubt Arsene, the protagonist's default persona, which is most likely a reference to Arsene Lupin, a fictional thief and master of disguise created by French writer Maurice Leblanc. Notice the chain emanating from his body, which is an important symbol for Persona 5, as the game features protagonists who feel ensnared, trapped and constrained by society and want to break free. The trailer then shows the game's logo, followed by our first look at actual gameplay. Interesting to note is the date on the top left corner, Monday, April 11th, which was the starting date for Persona 4. This has led many to assume that this is the starting date for Persona 5, but recently a few scans of the game came out and you can actually see that there is an earlier date, April 7th. In other words, April 11th is definitely not the starting date. But I'm sure that Persona 5's starting date is sometime in early April since that's when both Persona 3 and 4 begin. Something else that the date might tell us is the year Persona 5 takes place. The calendars of both Persona 3 and 4 have been consistent with our real-life calendar, so by comparing Persona 5's calendar with our real one, it might be possible to deduce Persona 5's year. The key lies in matching the day of the week with the date. Persona 3 starts on Tuesday, April 7th, 2009. If you look at a real calendar, you will see that April 7th, 2009 is indeed a Tuesday. The same applies to Persona 4, which starts on Monday, April 11th, 2011. If you look at a real-life calendar, you will see that April 11th, 2011 is indeed a Monday. So I looked through a calendar to see the next year in which April 11th is a Monday, as shown in this Persona 5 trailer, and the year I came upon was 2016. So either Persona 5 occurs in parallel with Persona 4, which I highly doubt, or it takes place in 2016, which seems very plausible. On the top left corner is the Japanese word for morning, but if we go by earlier games, this will likely be translated to early morning in the English versions. As for the white words in the background, according to my translator, these are onomatopoeia for the noises the train makes. We are then shown what the setting looks like after the protagonist reaches his destination and exits the train. On the bottom right here is definitive proof that the game setting is indeed Shibuya, as the translation reads Shibuya Underground Shopping Center. I'd also like to draw your attention to some of the signs in the background, which are standard Shibuya affair. For example, my translator noted that the circular F sign here looks a lot like the symbol for the metro's Fukutoshin line. He also noted that this area on the map labeled 106 could be Persona 5's version of a real-life department store in Japan called 109, which is located just across the street from Shibuya Station. The trailer then takes us to high school. Notice how the time of day changed on the top left corner. According to my translator, that's essentially another Japanese word for morning, but based on the English translations of previous Persona games, I'm going to assume that this can be translated as just morning. Now, unlike previous main characters who overall were very mellow and obedient in school, this new one seems to have a bit more of a delinquent, I don't care kind of attitude, which seems only natural for a thief. I'm sure that players can still choose to be studious and earn good grades to improve stats, but I get the feeling that this character will give off a completely different vibe in school than main characters in the past. One more thing to note is that sitting in front of the main character is Anne Takamaki. 
We are then taken to the afternoon, where we get to witness what I'm assuming to be social links in action. This one specifically is most likely the full Arcana social link, which is usually associated with whatever group the main character is with, whether it be SEES from Persona 3 or the investigation team from Persona 4. It looks like in this game, talking characters will be highlighted with the screen tearing itself to reveal their animated portrait, which I think is a very cool effect. Interesting to note here is the cat lying on the railing. This is Morgana in her discreet form. It's hard to say what the story is behind this character and its mysterious ability to transform, but it has been confirmed that she will play a key role in Persona 5's story. We are then taken to the evening, where we see the gang hanging out at a restaurant. Based on the map that they're studying, I'm gonna go ahead and assume that they're planning a heist, one that takes place in one of various dungeons found in Persona 5's alternate world, as we'll see later on. Here we also get to see the less discreet form of Morgana. For those doubting that they're one and the same, if you look closely you will notice that the eye color, fur color, and the pattern on the tail are identical on both. Also, we are given pretty clear evidence later on. Something else to note is that Persona 5 seems to be eager to inject a bit more of Western culture into the mix, as noted by the fries as well as the bottles and cans of Coke. I'm not trying to say that Japanese people don't eat fries or drink Coke, but it's just not as common as here in America. We are then shown more of what I'm assuming to be Persona 5's intro. Right here we can get a pretty good look at the Shujin High School insignia, for those wondering what that looks like. I think this segment is more evidence that this is a portion of the Persona 5 intro, since the characters randomly dancing in a stylized environment is very reminiscent of Persona 4's intro. Oh, and I'd like to point out the shirt that Ryuji Sakamoto is wearing, which says, "Zo oh my god, more evidence that Persona 5 is injecting a bit more of Western culture. After Anne gives us a little twirl, we are shown the cat Morgana transforming from her cat form to her... Doraemon form? Regardless, here is clear evidence that the two are indeed the same character. And then in the background, a bunch of Latin words appear. There are eight different words total, seven of which are the seven deadly sins. Luxuria is lust, gula is gluttony, avaricia is greed, asedia is sloth, ira is wrath, invidia is envy, and superbia is pride. The only word that isn't part of the seven deadly sins is cavum, which means hollow in Latin. There is also one more word that can be spotted in the next sequence, irritum, which means nothingness, worthlessness, or vanity. This all amounts to a grand total of nine Latin words. It's hard to say how they are related to anything at this point, but notice how the word persona can be found below each of these words. It's almost as if the Latin words are being used as adjectives to categorize personas. Could it be that the arcana system will somehow be expanded with these ominous Latin words? Another possibility is that each of these describe and represent a playable protagonist, perhaps indicating a total of nine playable characters by the end of the game. The trailer then transitions into Persona 5's stylized in-game menu, and for the most part, the options are fairly similar to the ones in the prequels. There are a few notable differences, however. For one, the status option has now been changed to Party, and Quest has been changed to Mission. One final change that I noticed is that the Social Link option is nowhere to be found. It has most likely been replaced with Cooperation, although some seem to think that cooperation could be an option for co-op multiplayer. I highly doubt that though. The Persona series has always been a story-driven, single-player focused game, and I just don't see that changing anytime soon. My personal bet is that cooperation is basically social link. Towards the bottom here we can see a brief description of the highlighted option. The description can be read as skill usage when the skill option is highlighted, item usage slash confirmation when item is highlighted, and finally, equipment change slash confirmation when equip is highlighted. We are then taken into the equipment menu. I love the stylistic animation and transition that takes place in the background. It really breathes new life to the interface. Here we are shown a bunch of Japanese text, menus, and options. The words on the left are the names of four of the game's characters. From top to bottom, they can be read as main character, Sakamoto Ryuji, Morgana, and Takamaki An. To the right, we have a bunch of equipment options. The Japanese text can be translated as shown on screen. 
the black words on white are equipment categories, while the white words on black are the currently equipped gear for each category. Interesting to note is that melee weapons and ranged weapons have been separated. In past games, each character could be associated with one type of weapon only. In Persona 4, for example, the MC would exclusively use two-handed swords, while Naoto would exclusively use pistols. In Persona 5, it looks like each character will have one exclusive melee weapon and one exclusive ranged weapon. This is likely indication that the two will serve different tactical purposes in battle. There will likely be certain enemies that will be weak to melee weapons, and there will likely be those who will be weak against ranged weapons. I would also like to point out the clothes that the protagonist is wearing, which can be translated as Shujin High School Winter Uniform, which confirms the name of the high school. On the bottom left is yet another description or prompt for the current menu. This can be read as whose equipment you want to change. Once players choose a character to customize, the message changes to what weapon do you want to change. The trailer then takes us inside the main character's melee weapon menu. The currently equipped weapon is the assassin knife, and the rest of the weapons can be translated as shown on screen. From what I've researched, all of these seem to be new weapons. Now, as I mentioned before, each character will have their own exclusive weapon types, and for the main character, his exclusive melee weapon seems to be short blades like knives and daggers, while his exclusive ranged weapon seems to be pistols and handguns. Next, we are shown an anime cutscene, which are always a pleasure to behold in Persona games. This train operator seems to be possessed by something, possibly a shadow or a demon, which results in the metro train crashing, wrecking havoc on the underground Shibuya. And yes folks, I did say demon, and I'll get to that later. We are then finally taken to actual dungeon gameplay of Persona 5. This first segment seems to show what I'm assuming to be the game's first dungeon, as noted by the fact that it's still the 11th of April. Interesting to note is that every time the main character lands on the floor or takes a step, this crimson, blood-like splash effect emanates from his feet. It really gives off this anti-hero feel that's prevalent throughout the whole trailer. This also shows that wherever he is right now is some kind of surreal alternate world similar to the Tartarus in Persona 3 or the TV world in Persona 4. After he turns around, we are shown what I'm assuming to be enemies outside of battle. Unlike in past Persona games in which enemies were basically represented as blobs, the enemies in Persona 5 seem to take the form of something that matches the theme of the dungeon. The theme of this particular dungeon seems to be that of an old western mansion or castle of sorts, which would explain why enemies look like those knight armors you'd expect to find in these kinds of places. And if you look closely, you will see that, like in past games, these enemies have different colors that may possibly be tells about their attributes. The black ones I'm assuming are regular foes that are close to the player's level, while these gold ones could perhaps be stronger foes or rare enemies that drop rare items, tons of money and give lots of experience, like the golden hands from past Persona games. This segment also shows just how much more open dungeons are in Persona 5. Looks like players are no longer limited to narrow passages. Instead, they'll be traversing large open spaces with a surprising amount of verticality, which seems appropriate for a game in which players take control of thieves. Also, it seems as though the series will be introducing jumping for the first time, although I don't think these will be platforming segments. The way it seems to work is that players simply have to walk towards a ledge, and the jumping will be done automatically. In other words, don't expect a dedicated jump button. Another new technique is the ability to traverse the world via stealth, as shown here with the main character swiftly making his way through this hallway while taking cover. This makes me wonder if there will be segments in the game in which players cannot get discovered. On the other hand, this could just be a technique to avoid enemies that players may not want to fight, or as a means to ambush enemies and get the first strike. Moving on, we are taken to Akemi Medical Clinic, which is run by this lady here, Takemi Tae. This is basically where players can purchase recovery, buff, debuff, and effect items. Every Persona game has one of these. The items listed here can be translated as shown on screen. Items like Medicine, Value Medicine, Revival Bead, and Vanish Ball will likely be familiar to those who have played past Persona games. But items like Organic Herbs, Dismute, and Tranquilizer are all new from what I can remember. Not exactly sure what Organic Herbs do, but I'm guessing that Dismute, Cure Silence, 
while Tranquilizer cures rage, fear, and confusion in a similar fashion to Persona 4's Sedative. We are then shown more anime cutscenes. This one shows off a bit of each character's personalities. If you ask me, Ryuji pretty much seems to fill the shoes of the main character's reckless, always lively, comedic relief best friend, a la Junpei from Persona 3 or Yosuke from Persona 4, while Anne seems to play the role of the female friend who nags at said best friend, a la Yukari from Persona 3 or Chia from Persona 4. And of course, Morgana fills the mandatory role of the group's non-human member, a la Koromaru from Persona 3 or Teddy from Persona 4. I'm sure the rest of the stereotypes will be filled by the other yet-to-be-announced characters. We are then shown an anime scene of the mansion-themed dungeon, which for some reason is falling apart. Perhaps this is part of a cutscene that plays once the dungeon is cleared. The trailer then takes us back to shopping, this time in a store called Untouchable Military Shop, which is run by Munehisa Iwai. The Japanese text can be translated as what's shown on screen. This is basically your average Persona gear shop, where players can buy weapons, armors, and accessories to upgrade their characters. As mentioned before, new to this series is the separation of melee and ranged weapons, and this carries through in this store. The player selects the melee weapons option which transitions into four other options, each of which basically lists the names of the four characters. Notice how the main character's label shows the words The Fool and Joker. The Fool is the arcana that main characters are associated with in Persona games, so nothing new there. More interesting is the word Joker, which is actually the name of an antagonist from Persona 2, whose persona is Nyarlathotep, the main antagonist of the second Persona games. So there is some speculation going around that the main character may be related to them. The theory is circumstantial at best though, so I would wait for a confirmation before jumping the gun. Now here is something interesting. If you freeze the section of the footage at the right time, you will notice that this is the Velvet Room. Like in past games, this Velvet Room takes the form of something that matches the game's themes and the main character's journey. In Persona 3, the Velvet Room was an infinitely ascending elevator, which symbolized the main character's ascension through the Tartarus. In Persona 4, the Velvet Room was a limousine cruising through an unknown path, mirroring the circumstances and mysteries of Inaba. In Persona 5, the Velvet Room takes the shape of a prison, with Igor's servants acting as the police guards. This is likely symbolism for the concept that the characters in this game all feel constrained and imprisoned by society, with their ultimate goal being freedom. The main character here looks pretty agitated, which has me thinking that this might be when Igor and the main character meet for the first time. The main character likely ends up here all of the sudden, possibly through a dream, which gets him agitated before Igor introduces himself and presents the circumstances of the journey that awaits. Also, once again, chains are proving to be a key symbol that will make a constant appearance throughout this game. We are then shown what battles look like in Persona 5. On the bottom right, we can see each character's HP and SP. Their stats are pretty low, indicating that this is pretty early in the game. What we are witnessing here is Persona 5's version of All Out Attacks. The unfortunate victims are two Sandmans and a Pyrojack. Those who haven't played Persona games prior to 3 or who haven't played other more traditional Shin Megami Tensei games might find it weird that the characters are battling Personas, but there was a time when many of these entities we call Personas, like Sandman and Pyrojack, were called Demons. Demons are essentially enemy creatures that players can attempt to talk to, negotiate with, and persuade during battle in order to gain certain perks, as well as the means to create personas. This system was used in both Persona 1 and 2, and a similar system is still used by more traditional Shin Megami Tensei games. It's hard to say how much of the demon system Persona 5 intends to borrow or what has become of the shadows, but what I can say is that Persona 5's developers seem to be looking back to the series' roots for inspiration, for better or for worse. I get the feeling that Persona 5 will have a good mix of what gamers loved about the old-school Persona games like 1 and 2 and what they love about the modern Persona games like 3 and 4. This short segment also shows the types of weapons that some of these characters will be using. We already know from the menus that the protagonist uses handguns for ranged weapons and short blades like knives and daggers for melee weapons, and that shows through here as well. 
Morgana uses slingshots for ranged weapons, and cutlasses or possibly longswords in general for melee weapons. Ryuji uses shotguns for ranged weapons, and long blunt objects for melee weapons. Unfortunately, the trailer doesn't show what Anne uses for ranged weapons, but it does show that she uses whips for melee weapons. The trailer then showcases what Persona 5's all-out attack stylized sequence looks like. Once again, we are shown that delinquency is a big theme of the game. I mean, just look at their faces. I don't know about you, but they look like they're about to cause some serious trouble. A very different look from previous games, in which characters looked cool and graceful in all-out attacks. We are then taken back to more portions of what I'm assuming to be the game's intro sequence. Like before, we can see each character doing rather uncharacteristic things in a stylized environment, this time skating in fabulous fashion. The trailer then concludes with a look at a rather mysterious bit of footage, showing what I'm assuming to be the protagonist transforming into his persona, our scene. Part of the reason why I think he's transforming into his persona, apart from the clear similarities between these two images, is the sound of glass shattering as the trailer concludes. Which is very similar to the one that plays when players change personas in previous games during battles. Persona. Another reason is a scene we saw earlier, which shows the main character falling and then our scene rising in his place, which looks a hell lot like a transformation to me. I wonder if this is just a main character thing or if all playable characters will be transforming to summon their personas. One last thing I would like to point out is the yellow color of his eyes. If you recall from past games, the same color can be found on the eyes of Shadow Selves, which are essentially shadows that embody a twisted alternate image of an individual. These Shadow Selves were featured in Persona 4, if you recall, and they also made an appearance in Persona 2. Could this mean that the main character has shadow properties? Again, the battle sequence we saw earlier seems to suggest that Persona 5's enemies will be demons, so it's hard to say what has become of the shadows, but perhaps these yellow eyes mean that shadows won't be completely absent from the game. Another indication of this is that the enemies shown in this trailer do seem to be wearing masks that resemble those of the masks of shadows in Persona 3 and 4. Perhaps the developers intend to implement a new system that somehow makes use of both demons and shadows. It's honestly hard to say for sure at this point. This is where the trailer ends and thus concludes my trailer analysis. Thank you for tuning in. As you can see, this trailer provides many significant details about the highly anticipated title, but it also raises some questions that I'm ill-equipped to answer so I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Also, if I missed anything or made any mistakes, be sure to let us know. Finally, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit that like button, and also be sure to share the video with your friends. And to be further updated on Persona 5, be sure to subscribe to Yong Gear. I'll see you guys next time. Yong out!